everyone, how are you? Uh, we are here at La Loma Viva in the south of Spain and we just finished a workshop, a very nice workshop with a wonderful group and we planted over 1,000 uh, trees and shrubs and other seeds here and now we're gonna show you with Rai and Kari and Antonio who is filming uh, what we did. So behind us here we have um, a vegetable production system with um, tree lines in between. We decided to bring the forest closer to our closer to our living areas as we would we want to feed uh, grow vegetables to feed uh, ourselves and the students when they come here and do workshops and courses. We are very uh, privileged and blessed to have Ernst Gosch working with us. He designed the system and. We've implemented it and uh, we're going to be doing research with him on the development of the system with his guidance. So here we have three lines. Uh, we have a citrus main crop production line over here. Over here we have a main crop uh, production of avocados because we love to eat avocados. Um, and on that side, along the terrace wall, we've planted a, a productive windbreak. So as you look at this line over here, you have these sticks represent the avocado tree because we planted them by seed. So at every two meters, we have avocados planted by seed as the canopy layer. 50 centimeters towards the south on this side of your avocado tree, we have a, um, a black poplar as the emergence and biomass bring down to the soil to, um, to feed the soil and, and the, the microorganisms and life. Right next to the emergent we have our Senecio tomoides or canary creeper which is a climber and a ground cover, a succulent full of water so that we can chop and drop and, and improve the conditions of the area. The emergent poplar at the same time um, because of its position to the, the south um, and southwest, the rainfall comes from the southwest and it's a, it's a type of fertigation um, um, element which will then help the other species to, to gain nutrients and water. To the right of your Senecio, we have our Pistachio lentiscus, and then your um, medium layer is a, is a wild. Um, almond, later to be grafted on, will be, it will be peaches. Um, the reason why we like to use the wild almond, the root stock is extremely drought tolerant and you, then you can graft any stone variety of fruit onto this. It's a wonderful, wonderful sp uh, species for reforesting uh, dry areas. At the same time, in between the statue, this is the pistachio uh, terebinthus to be then later grafted onto the pistachio uh, lentiscus yeah. and then later on pistachio vera to be grafted onto that so we can have a productive crop of delicious pistachios nuts. Um, in this space here, in this space here we have planted by seed um, artichoke as a biomass species and also to, to eat and enjoy the wonderful artichoke vegetable. To the, on this side of your canary creeper in a long line we have planted um, wheat as a, uh, for growth information and a biomass chop and drop in it, and we've also planted on the side, on this side we're going to plant uh, is wheat as well. Then also to the right of your artichoke and to the left of your Senecio tomoides we planted a beautiful fig as another layer in the stratification. Um, and below this we have our wonderful herbs, rosemary, lavender, thyme, sage, and um, santolina. And below this, as the placenta one, we have a, a wonderful consortium of vegetables, onions, aubergines, and uh, carrots, garlic, spinach on the outside. One of the areas we implemented on this workshop 
is a, it was an irregular shape at the end of the field, like a triangular shape. And so we, we were really looking for a different design that was in straight lines that we could fill in this area. And um, Felipe told us about a really cool uh, design, which is a mosaic of circular nests. So the purpose of this area was we really need a windbreak on this side of the field. We get very strong winds and it really dries out the area. We'll show you here one example of a consortium that we planted in one of the nests. There's various different consortiums and we've used uh, good windbreak species like wild olive, oaks, um, carob, and then supported by poplars and uh, Celtis australis. So we'll show you here just one example of a nest. So our main tree here is the wild olive, uh, supported by two black poplar. And then we have aromatic uh, shrubs, rosemary, lavender, some uh, pomegranate tree. And this is a prickly pear surrounding a little bay laurel tree. And then we have the lovely canary creeper, which is a great uh, biomass producer. And then some annual vegetables as the placenta. We've got fennel, uh, kale, and tomatoes. And then indigenous support species like the pistachio lentiscus. And then uh, for growth information, we've planted a grass called Sudan grass around the circumference of the nest. And this will provide po positive growth information to all other species in the nest. Um, and also a fertilizer, which will then chop and, and drop onto the, onto the nest as biomass. So in here, we implemented uh, white poplar as an emergent. Uh, next to it, uh, about uh, 25 centimeters apart on, on the south side, we have uh, this pistachio lintiscus. Next to it, we have um, the wild uh, olive tree, uh, the rosemary, and in here we have the Quercusilex. On this end, we have, we have uh, um, a Spartos, that is for wing cuts and uh, mulch all this area. Then we have added the prickly pear and some, some uh, onions as a, for the vegetable production. And it's a marvelous design and we're so excited to be looking towards the future on how this system um, develops.